The goal for this podcast is to better our understanding through conversation. Communication is one of the easiest, yet hardest things to do. Whether that's communication of feelings, thoughts, or opinions. But through communication, new perspectives begin to take place. Throughout the various topics and opinions discussed on this podcast, we hope that we can add value, understanding, and a few laughs to your day. Thank you for listening and enjoy the show. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Real Talk Podcast. I'm your host, Bruce. This is my man, E. And what's going on, man? My brother, my brother. Great day to be alive. That's above it. Ground. Uh, we got your book here, E, man. Poetic Depths, Chronicles of the Human by Irvin Miller Jr., man. So um, with this book, um, you asked me to pull out a couple of things that stood out to me. And the first one I'm going to go to is on page 175, Dormant State. I, I remember where I was at with this now. I definitely remember. Kind of, can you give us like a brief like summary of like how, what what mindset you was, or what inspired it, or like where you was in this time of your life when you wrote that? Um, or what just comes back? Just any memories that come back for it? I remember, man. I was in like a, I was in about a five year period. Um, because I know it was like it was equivalent. It was half of a decade that I spent on. Just like from familiarizing myself with a, a lot of things that uh, transpired throughout our history. And when I say our history, I'm talking about, you know, people of color, um, so-called black folk. And um, just being introduced to a lot of things that that honestly today, presently, it still it sits square in front of us. But to be honest with you, a lot of us, we overlook it because it just it looks like. It looks like cutlery. We used to the things that sit right in front of us as far as uh as far as what we eat with. Like right. we take you know, we take it for granted, like yo, it's a fork, it's a spoon, it's you know, you know, but really and truly when you think about it, like nobody ever stops and asks, how did this get here? Why did this get here? You right. know. Um it just look a part of the yeah, setup. It, it, you it's, know what I'm saying? It, 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 it is what it is. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's interesting, that quote, it is what it is. That's That allows us to accept whatever when we say that, really. It is what it is. True. Because it stops, in a sense, when we use that, it stops the debate within our mind. Right. I don't even need to, we can put an exclamation mark behind that, it is what it is. And you automatically on the, already know, period. But you don't know. <laughs> Period. But in our mind, that's yeah. that's it. No more questions asked. It True is that. what it is. But it's like, is it? Like going back in history and stuff like that, because a lot of things like that I learned about, you know, it kind of sparks this. Uh, man, it's like it's a lot of crazy stuff that went on. You know what I'm saying? Whether it be laws passed or whether it be actions took. Um, a lot of just things that was actual law in the South and just across the nation, man, that kind of like put little roadblocks and hindered us from making progress. And I think when you go back and look at it, man, like it's um, it makes sense on why our present current situations, some of the things that we see, why they happen and why they are uh, exactly. the way they are. And it also, if you think about it, though, and you really dig a little deeper. And you're able to think about things with the open mind. It also makes sense of why we haven't, why we haven't, you know, uh, gotten out of certain situations. Why we remain uh, oppressed, depressed, all this other stuff. Because when you really and truly, when you're able to pull a mask off of something, then you understand what it is you're really seeing. Right. What would you say most people fear most? Would you say most people would fear a man or would most people fear a mask? When you start tracing our history, most of the times, that's what we were taught to fear the most. The Ku Klux Klan, they covered their face. Right, right, right. But but those were the same individuals walking around every day without a mask. They were being, you know, in the court system. They could be police officers. They could be whatever. You know, but you feel what you really, truly don't know. 
Mm. A lot of people, you know, over the course of generations, people, you know, people started fearing, you know, um, they started fearing speaking out because of the consequence. The consequences looked a lot like, okay, a person just goes missing. Right. That's a cover up. That's a mask. The person just then went missing. We don't even know where they at. But two people could have been with that individual just last night and they seen them get taken mm-hmm. by people wearing masks. Right. It's it's the way you it's the way you perceive things too, man, because to be honest with you, when a person takes the mask off, then they can they can they can move totally different. Right. Those could be the friendliest people that you know on a day to day without the mask. With the mask on They're a monster mm. They're an animal True So yeah. it's like Who do you fear? That is a good question man Now that you say it like that man Because it is true With the mask on It's uh, almost like serial killers You know what I mean? Like they mask up And you never knew Like yo we interact with this person On a man, daily look, basis Man that man didn't even, He didn't never look like a threat Right That's, that's always the, This person You would have never took this person as a threat He had never People that's like true. to say that No they are never They are never do anything like that You know what's funny though man One thing that uh That brought Like now that we're talking about this Equal opportunity We advocate and promote but when given the opportunity, some will gloat. It's the Pied Piper that creates the footnote for the overseer's amusement. The weapon becomes music, so they use it. And I think about like just music, man. Like it's this artist called D1, and he called out Jim Jones and uh, Meek Mills. I don't know if you've seen that online. No, I haven't. And uh, he was saying how like they promote different things in their music and things like that. Rick Ross, all these people, and. Um, they use it You know what I'm saying they use that music And the music becomes a mask You know what I mean For the people behind it Because you don't know Who owns Sony You don't know Who exactly. owns These record companies These people like that You know And they put up Maybe a front Of like Yo I signed this The artist Let's just say Take anybody For, for instance You know um, Let's just say Rick Ross He stars Maybach Music Right mm-hmm. He may own that company But the company That's funding that You don't know the, know Who that is So it's almost like You know they, they wear these masks And they promote What they want This negativity Inside this music And things like that so You would just be Probably surprised If you Going knew Going down the rabbit hole Yeah man yeah. If you knew Who would uh, who, who's, who's behind Some of this stuff It's that moment May all rise And shine Like an uncorked Bottle of aged wine Do you get that part? Say that one more time all Right It's that moment May all rise and shine Like an uncorked bottle of aged wine Oh yeah Like a celebration Yeah Yeah And then and, and life should be a celebration Just waking up in the morning Should all rise But then also with that When you're in the court of law They In mm. a sense They ain't even giving you An opportunity to rise They say all rise Yeah That means up under the sound Of that voice Everybody in this room Yeah And that's the precedence That the man You know That that's That's Yeah hey, All rise yeah, You know what I'm saying Everybody black road hey, come through, to, yeah, like, yeah. to hey, hey, You better get to it <laughs> You're in a wheelchair You still try to get it Our <laughs> Lord forgive me But <laughs> It's real though but It's like bro it's, But Yeah man That's you know it's funny how that goes because you can be in one place, right, under one set of rules, and then you can be in a whole nother place, and now you create your own thoughts on what you find to be a rule or not. Mm-hmm. Now, your alarm clock goes off. Your alarm clock is really acting as uh, true the that. man in the black robe, true all that. rise. But now, you sit up there and you, uh, I need a couple more minutes, so I'm going to lay down. That could ultimately have you late for the most important point in your life. Mm. Now, all rise, you hear that voice, all rise, you up under a whole nother atmosphere. You know I ain't even playing with this. Let me yeah, get up. I got to get up. Ain't no snoozing. You know what I mean? That's very true, man. That's Don't, very true. It, <laughs> and then, you know what I'm saying? Like an uncorked bottle of aged wine. So, again, when you pop that top, guess what? What's, hey, what's on the bottom? It's coming mm-hmm. to the top. You know what I'm saying? It's just a, hey, just like a volcano. It's yeah, about true. to erupt. Once that top come off, that's yeah. it. I feel you. But if that. we got up like that, we'd be all right. <laughs> just go ahead and leave the thought behind. You just get up, rise. Mm-hmm. You know, um, let the knowledge come forth from the great north. And that right there, hey, mentality. You know, what is your mentality? What what do you know? Where does all of your your substance, where does all of your, you know, creativity, everything come from? It comes from up here. 
Mm, you know what that. I'm saying? So it's all going back to the north. You know what I'm saying? It comes from the north. True that. Even uh, when you're thinking, like if somebody asks you a question you, right on the spot, you be like, you always mm, look, you up. look up. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> um, well, well, you I, confuse you. <laughs> that's a good question. <laughs> you wait for it to come down. Like, yo. Even when you point, you point up. Mm-hmm. The north. And it's like, uh, it's easier to retrieve what's conceived. It's easier to retrieve what's conceived so ask yourself, can you believe the lies that we've received? So with that now, I'm 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 challenging you to think now. Right. Is that really and truly I'm setting you up for what's to come. Mm-hmm. You know, um from that, don't you worry, the lie gets glory. Cause really and truly, a lie, I hate to say this, but a lie always gets glory. Because oh, yeah, you gotta definitely. think about it. When people are embellishing the story, they're making it so big and so, you know, it's all dressed up. Right, bro, they sensationalize it, man. Boy, look on, here. Man. Boy, for real? It was right. going down like that over there last night. Mm-hmm. But I knew I should have been there. But they had like 30 cops over there, man. 30? <laughs> <laughs> Boy, man, straight up. That's how it goes. It really is, though. And then it's like, um, don't you worry, the lie is glory told in his story. So mm-hmm. his story is history. Mm-hmm. That's all it is. Right, his point his of view. story, history. And I believe So that. it's like all throughout our history, we've been lied to constantly, you know, to the point to where we don't even know who we are no more. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? We know who they tell us we are, and most of us believe that, you know. That's, really That's why, you know, I always, often, oftentimes, I always say so called black. Because it's what they call us, so called. That's that's what, and the reason why I do that is because I, a lot of our people, we, we're used to being called that. So for a lot of us, that's you know we're used to that representation. So that's what I use just to connect with the people. Nah, I respect that. You know, plus you know during like the slavery times and things like that, a lot of our history, our records, all of that, man, was just like. Destroyed, man. Like, in in some cases, it wasn't all destroyed, but some of it was just disconnected. Right. So when you create, you know, when you create a line, if you have a straight line, and then you just take a, a pair of scissors and cut that line, and just leave a bunch of questions. Ex- exactly. Before I was trying to explain to you, like, uh, my art style, like. And writing, right? And I'm I'm explaining to you real quick using this 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 poem. So you can split this poem up into one, two, three, four points. Mm-hmm. Now, when you look at it, look how short I I decided to make the lines. Right. I made the lines purpose. Okay, I purposely like I made three, them short. Four words, is, yeah, each inside line. of a line mm-hmm. because a lot of people don't like to read. Yeah. So now, instead of you know, instead of reading this long winded thing, first of all, when people look at this, they go, "Oh, that ain't too much." Right. Besides a whole page. Exactly. Like, so oh, automatically, God. this is going to catch certain people because they, oh, I can read this. Mm-hmm. You know. But if it's too long, people, oh, no, nah, uh-uh. Right, you yeah. got to have the candy inside of medicine. Yeah. Oh, excuse me, you got to have the medicine inside of candy, man. Come on. That's, you just dress it well. Yep. But so, if but if you're going to do it, if you would like to do it like this, it's got to be substance-based. It's got to be right. able to hit. It's got to hit quick. So, like, for example, you know, that, that's why, even though I did it like this, man, I had to make sure that I can fit, you know, I could fit. Substance in there and, and hit you immediately. Mm-hmm. And it's got to be impactful immediately. <clears throat> Otherwise, it defeats the whole purpose. Right. Deliver before adolescent in the same lesson, treated like simple peasants and denied our true essence. So immediately, I'm saying a lot in that little bit. It's like in a Break little it down window. for us, man. All right. So deliver before an adolescent. So right before that, I tell you, don't worry. The lie. Gets glory told in his story. So now I'm telling you about the introduction of my history. Right. So from that point, delivered before an adolescent. So it was delivered to me before an adolescent. They were telling us about Christopher Columbus discovering America. How could a man discover something that was already in, you know, that was already being, you know, inhabited Mm. by others? Right. So, nah, that's a lie. That's the first lie that was told to us, Mm -hmm. you know, and we celebrated that lie. We did. Columbus Day. Day. You know what I'm saying? So it's like uh 
that's so that's that's I'm just pretty much taking and breaking that down to you, you know, from my point of view, because now it's personal. Right. I, I'm telling you, I, I personally have experience with this. So if you you gonna tell me one lie and tell me, you know, hey, a man, you know, a man set up there and discovered our world. Now you can lie to me about anything. How can I trust you now? Right. You know, if the first thing that was supposedly important was a lie, then you know, now I gotta question everything. What I, exactly. Right. So um and then here it is, we go to this here. Treat it like treat it like simple peasants. Because that's a lot of people look at us as peasants, you know, and deny our true essence. Now, we don't even understand, man. We come from a line, a, you know, a, a lineage of kings, queens, you know, high chiefs. We all that. Mm -hmm. That's within us. Oh. Then, you know, the next the next uh, stanza is talking about equal opportunity, how we advocate and promote it. So equal opportunity, we advocate and promote. But when given the opportunity, some will glow. So you think about it. Everybody want everybody want these slice of the pie when it comes to equal opportunity. But then when certain people get an opportunity, some people it's no longer about us, the people, we. It becomes more about me. Right. And that starts to glow in. So now all of a sudden, you were given the opportunity. To, you know, to really, you know, to rise up and to really bring your people with you. But now, all of a sudden, you forgot about your people. Now, it's on it's on self. It's 100%. on it's on me. You know, I'm up under the spotlight. Man, and that's where the crowds in the crowd battle mentality, the exactly. uh, mentality comes in. Exactly. That's where people, you know, don't want to come back to the hood and give back. That's where, and it's just an affection on both the good and the bad. You're right, man. And then this next one, and, and this one here, and this is, I, I believe this is what, what caught you. It's the Pied Piper that creates the footnote. Hmm. For the overseer's amusement, the weapon becomes music. Right. So they use it. So all that me, matter of fact, we can go backwards with this. So they use it. The weapon being music. Facts. For the overseer's amusement. Now all I'm doing is reading it backwards to you now. Yeah, it makes perfect sense. That's it. You know what I mean? That's it. And you know, it's like, man, <laughs> we we it's like, man, how how do we even get to this point? You get to this point because first of all, you gotta understand a weakness. Right. You gotta understand people. You got to study people. Understand what makes people tick to what makes them go. You right. know what? Okay, so for example, you know psychology. Exactly. So for example, you you can you know we can hit the we can hit the rewind button, man, and we can go all the way back in history. So when when given a, a adverse set of a struggle that struggles, we say when given an adverse set of struggles and near death uh, situations, what happened to a lot of the people? What do you have to fall back on, really, during that point in time? When you want to give up, when there's nothing really left to look forward to, when you already know, wake up tomorrow, but we're going to be right back picking this card. Nah, yeah, be, you, you know got what I'm saying? spirituals, man. You got spirituals. Ex exactly. So that's, that's the, the spirit thing. Up. Exactly. And, and people see that. Mm -hmm. You know what? These folk are actually, they enduring this and overcoming as they working by sinking. Right. And then they hear it don't sound half bad either. Hey, we might be able to do a little something. They with see this. a profit in it, man. Yeah, and then that's when the exploitation comes in and all that type of stuff, bro. You said you said you said something, man. You said they they see the profit in it, or they saw the profit in. It. So that means we're profitable. Mm -hmm. That means that we have a lot of equity, a lot of value, hundred percent, a lot of worth, a lot of IP too, intellectual property, man. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Do you know what a nickname for us? What they deemed us? Many see this this part. You don't you don't hear a lot of people talking about this part. Black gold. Hmm. That's crazy. <laughs> That's crazy though, man. The mindset of some people. You know what I mean? Exactly. The value. Somebody say black gold. Well, look at that. That tell you, the worth is is it's. 
It's crazy though, man. I had a buddy in class that uh broke it down to me. He was saying how like sometimes <clears throat> you see the struggles that like for instance, our parents, we saw the struggles they went through. They saw the they they saw the struggles that our grandparents went through. So your parents tend to have less struggles than your grandparents and then they they take a little bit away, add a little bit. Same thing with us, take a little bit away, add a little bit and things like that to the point to where sometimes this generation now that we have a lot more opportunity than the previous two we like yo we could go travel when we want we could eat whatever we want we could do this whatever we want and we spend less time pouring into the generation that's going to come after us which right now some of them majority they getting their information from is music you know what i mean that's why that stuck out to me because music is a teaching source i feel like a lot in the black community and a lot of kids pull especially when you're younger you pull a lot of information for the, about the culture from music and it's so important that, like you were saying, when profit get into it, and when you have people that want to gloat or get in that position and it corrupts their mind, um, that's when you have corruption of the of the, of the community. So this is how it's gonna go. Okay. Your job is to grab the letter from whatever letter that I call. What comes next? That's the one you grab. All right. So let's see how it goes. Exactly. All right. And I'm I'm gonna explain why why I did this. All right. T. Uh, S. No, U. All right. Technically, folk, he would have been wrong. Right, right, right. <laughs> I tried to All catch All right. Okay, on the fly, I'm going to switch this up. Okay. Now you're going to go what letter comes before. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right. K. L. Wrong. J. Right. <laughs> All right. Now we're going to go what comes after. X. Why? B. C. M. L. Wrong. Uh, N. Okay. Q. R. G. H. <laughs> D. Uh, D. E. Okay. I did that to to prove my point. You can put anything to a tune to a, a song. And you remember it. I remember a hundred percent. And he just exhibited it. Why? So in a sense, I noticed how sharp he became when I started. When we were saying, you know, after, like for example, I said. So for example, I say R. Uh, N O P Q R S. See, and and he was able to he was able to pick it up. And the quicker I started going with it, he was catching on quicker because mm-hmm. it started sounding. It was a tune, right? You, you you started getting you get that rhythm exactly, and that's crazy. See, that's that's my point, man. So it's like you put anything to music, and you can use it. Nah, that's real, man. One hundred percent. All right, so some dance to history's music, I suppose. Right. So again, right before that, I'm telling you, you know, it's all. The overseer's amusement. So now, through the music, they got you dancing. Mm-hmm. So some dance to history's music, I suppose, like a ballerina, we're always on our proverbial toes. Yeah, man. That's uh, say that one, say that part again. Some dance to history's music, I suppose, like a ballerina, we're always on our proverbial toes. Mm, that's uh, that make a lot of sense, man. Because of the way, when when I hear that, this is what comes to mind is that like. You got like the culture is so big, man. Like, and you have people that do things that are just for attention and just for gloating. And then you have people that actually, it's a part of history, man. There's like some meaning behind it. Yeah. And but when sometimes when you got corrupted people mind, they're like, look at them. They all like that. Yeah. Look what they're doing. They dancing. Look yeah. at look how they dancing. Yeah. But it's like, what are what is the meaning behind it? What is the person behind it? Because you got some people that do it because they say. Traditional thing and it's and, and yeah, it's it really meaningful. has a meaning to right. it. Right? Yeah, and you got some people that just doing it for they just really do it for the biting. They biting <laughs> they bite and, and then they just yeah, just being ignorant with it. Exactly. So, you know the funny thing that well, it's not even funny, man. But the the sad thing that popped in my head, like entertainment, the most insulting type of you know um, entertainment that I've seen. Like back in the day, them old Western movies or whatever, man, they pull out the gun and start aiming at their feet. Dance! And they get the sh- 
That's funny, but bro. Again, oh man, them boys shooting at the rocks, just making them it dance, right. and they they sit right, you know. But you know what? I, I think the switch it, uh, life, the movie life. That's a great movie because I I think he made it. It's comedic gold because it's like, for instance, like the dude that was um, he's like uh, anybody go towards that gun line, uh, shoot him. He's like. I don't get it, boss. You know what I'm saying? People like that because you you could identify with like okay, I got people that's yeah in you the community know, that's yeah. like that. You know what I'm saying? Um, jingling, jingling. You got people in the community like that, and it's just it was funny, man. He hit all wickets, man. It's yeah. just like I the, I think that's the separation, but it keeps us on our toes because now you over a little bit paranoid yeah. because you don't want to pre- be perceived as the negative side. You know what I'm exactly. saying? Exactly. And you know what else too, man? It like dejangled. Like that oh, movie that, that, Ah bro I think that was a dope movie it, No it de- no, I'm saying it, oh, okay. it definitely was right. But that also it, it, it touches on all facets Of people Like Yeah Especially within our oh, community Bro Samuel Jackson Boy look here <laughs> Yo, That brother was I, he I was, don't see how he didn't get Canceled for that Bro but It was real bro First of it all It was real man you, you, He you played see, that part well Okay man. let me ask you a question How could he get canceled for that But he he been for the culture though but, no, You no, know what I'm saying No no let's talk about that For a second how could he get canceled for that? Be uh, well. I want you to think about who it would have took to cancel him. Right. Why right, would right, he right, have been right, canceled? Right. That's true. That's true. See, that's the thing about this canceling culture and stuff. You think about it, man. I, I'm gonna keep it a buck. When it comes to black, so-called black exploitation, people don't really get canceled. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Think about that. That is true, but when it's and to be honest with you, it's it's always been a sensitive subject when it when it deals with us and the victimization of us. But we don't really come together as a people and say we got to cancel this. Mm. Dealing with our culture, our yeah. people. I don't know. I like I said, I'm on the fence with that. I feel like some things we probably should have canceled that we let slide. But I do feel like we have people in the community that don't get the light. Who are out there canceling things that shouldn't be so you said, available? I want to go back to something you just said. You said something that we made that you think we we let slide, right? I got to put the book down on this. <laughs> so when you say we let slide, right? Why do you think we let we let it slide, and what and what <clears throat> would have caused? What what, what do you think? What caused it to just slide between the cracks? Uh, it's a lot of things, man. Like us not having the resources, us feeling that we don't can have we the power that, can, to. Can, can we? Do you think we can still use that as a as an excuse now? Uh, now I would say not with the power of social media. Social media is pretty fi- powerful. Um, but I would say in the past, like you know, like I said, resources, uh, us not having the backing, us not having the support, of uh, us feeling like we're gonna be out in, on a limb by ourselves. And nobody's gonna help us. I don't know. I think that one they still to this day. I think that's the. I think that that's the one that's that's paramount, so to yeah. speak. Because if you're gonna be a whistleblower, man, then you got like that's that's a that is a very heavy crown to wear. You know what I mean? Um, because you know your livelihood is on the line, your family's on the line, things like that. So it's like you want to know that you're not gonna be the only one to speak out on this. If other people know it's wrong too, like it's a different thing. But if you're the only one that's thinking it's thinking it's wrong, but if you got other people that you've talked to that say, "Hey, this is wrong," also, you will also want that support to be able to to back you when you step up and say something. Why is it that we cool with being a ride or die for the negativity? Ah, bro. But things like this that should be pressing. Issues that right. we should I'm talking about deep down inside It doesn't even matter if I'm going to be hung out To dry by myself This I, I'm If I got to be the guinea pig To try to bring the, the beginning of the end to this Then so be it Let me. Be. Why do you think We don't ride or die for the positivity But we are ride or die for the negative To be real because it don't take much To ride and die for negativity Like you just got to be the loudest one in the room You know what I'm saying You got to just look the part you feel me? If you look the part, what's, you're the loudest one in the what's, room. What's looking the part? Like, just be ignorant, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? Whether, like, if you riding down some on some BS, you know what I'm saying? Like, let's just say on some street stuff or some, you know, some uh, drama. You know what I mean? It's things like that. Like, you just got to keep up mess, be the loudest one about it, talking about it, and 
you know, looked apart. You know what I mean? And I feel like on the other side, on the flip side, when you're trying to boycott or if you're trying to speak up, whistleblowing on some positivity stuff, it comes with more accountability. You know what I mean? Like, you're going to be held accountable, man. You're going to have to articulate why you think this is wrong or what about this is so wrong. So, you saying like that. that. So, I don't mean to cut you off. So, you saying that it can prove tiresome to the point to where now are you in it for the long haul? Like, right, right, right. Is right. your endurance enough for this subject matter? Yeah, for it, real. It's almost like being, it's almost like taking something Wow, this is what it is in a sense. It's like taking somebody to the court for a wrongdoing, and here it is: the person you take to court is actually somebody that's wealthy. So they got the they got the resources. Yeah, they got the bread. That man. mean they got the money. So that means therefore they got the time. They got we the can, good we can, Hey, we can go. We can. <laughs> hey, we can go the distance with this. Hey, and then the, <laughs> hey, the attorney for them might say, or attorneys for them might say, hey, you know what? Just scratch it out. Right. If the, the longer this scratches out, you ain't got to worry about them because, first of all, they don't have the funds. Secondly, they're going to get tired. And if they don't have the funds, they can't pay it. They, they can't pay their one lawyer. Right. And trust me. And let me pull some strings and see if I can make it hard for them. Ex- exactly. You know so it's like, then all of a sudden, they might start off with the uh, uh, with the attorney in the courtroom with them. And then all of a sudden, it, it, as they continue to progress, now they're the only ones showing up to their own. You know, now right. they represent self. And then, like I said, like, when you got evil people, man, like people with messed up minds on the racist tip or the prejudice tip, things like that. Let's just say they do got money. It's like, let me do some digging on them. Are they behind on their taxes? Are they behind it's, on you're right. do, what you're are the right. kids like? You're are the right. kids getting in trouble? How, who are their family members connected to? You know what I'm saying? So they try to make it hard for you in life, man, sometimes. And that's why it becomes so tiresome and so troublesome. And uh, I think that that's why sometimes a lot in the black community, based on our history, it's kind of worked to where they wanted to discourage us from speaking up on different things. But we also have those people, those MLKs, those uh, Malcolm X's, those Harriet Tubman's, the the Reginald F. Lewis's. You know what I'm saying? We got the people out there that's going to push the status quo, man, and just say, nah, bro, we ain't going to have that. So I think, you know, I think it's necessary, too, because it drops off the people who ain't really about that life. And then it also highlights the people that are really about their life and really doing the work. You know what I'm saying? The true freedom fighters out here. You know what I'm saying? That's doing the work. But it's like, you know, it's the same, man. You know, you stand for something or you fall for anything. 100%. And to be honest with you, the day you don't, the day you choose not to stand with someone else and you simply, and you and you use this uh, this logic, you know what? Well, I hate that they got going. You know, I hate that they got that going on. But that ain't me. That ain't my business. I gotta worry about. And then, mm-hmm. sure enough, your day come when you get that knock at the door, and now you know the issue is coming to see you. Right. right. But now you chose not to stand with your fellow brother or sister, and now y'all situations could be eerily similar, almost look 1000%. like twin situations, and now. All you need is somebody to stand with you, but you elected just last year, so you know, or the year before, not to stand with them. And now, all of a sudden, you know, I got to swallow my pride. I'm gonna ask Sister Brooke, and they stand with me because right, I mean, right, right. after all, we we are going through the same thing. Now I see it's attacking the neighborhood. You feel me? And that's what it's I the think. neighborhood now <laughs> with the low voice, yeah. <laughs> Sister Shirley. I say, Sister Shirley, <laughs> Bro, it, it, it's it's me. <laughs> <laughs> the next one is, the next one is, uh, we reach to support insulting designer clothes. Right. The fashion is modern hieroglyphics encrypted, and our eyes unfocused. Oh, excuse me, and our unfocused eyes can't depict it. So here it is. We reach to support insulting designer clothes. So, the line right before that is, like a ballerina, we're, <clears throat> we're on our proverbial toes. We reach to support insulting de- uh, designer clothes. So, with that being said, um, we always we always built to be on our toes, so to speak. So, if you think about it, how can you truly be an aggressive defense, right, if you're always backpedaling? Mm. If you're always backpedaling, that means, to be honest with you, the offense is already ahead of you. Right. They're always going to get yards on you simply because you're always in retreat mode. Mm-hmm. So by human nature, 
if the offense job is to go forward and your uh, and on a defense your job is supposed to be to also be going forward to stop you know yeah. to stop the advancement of the other team if you if you are a defense that's always in retreat, that means you're going backwards. The offense can't help but to get yards. Hundred percent. It could be the weakest offense, but if you already in retreat, hey, you know what? Just keep running forward. You know that's it. That's it. So man. it's like it, it gets you to thinking. It's like if we always on our toes, and then it's like we. We sitting up there and when it comes to like insulting designer clothes, we go for that. Like right, it, right. We, we all about it, you know. <laughs> I don't understand it myself. You know what I'm saying? Exactly, bro. And and I guess, well, I do understand it to a degree, because when it's masked by when it's masked by, you know, this image that may look innocent to, you know, to an individual or they don't stop or that individual d- doesn't stop to ask, you know, why? Why? Resources as far as finances, investments and banking, like um, it's a book called The Color of Money. And I think, too, we haven't been afforded the same opportunities as far as starting business and the funding that we need to start these businesses. So it's like the quality sometimes is not there the quantity is not there to be able to reach that customer base like it is for certain other people. And we only have to go there for like luxury brands because you don't know, you can't name off the top of your head 10 luxury black owned band, uh, brands. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So okay. it's like you kind of forced to go over there. You're not forced. So, 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 so <clears throat> I'm going to say fair. Right. That's what I, I give you a good fair. Fair. Okay. If that's the case, then guess what? For these upcomers right now, that's that's gifted. They have these uh these these talents that's immensely you know talented. For these young and upcoming people of color, mm-hmm. why not be the first to you know to to supply this hundred percent so that now the culture actually has somebody to get behind. Or granted, now it might be time to do your research. Maybe these people do exist, but maybe the issue is they don't exist outside of your mind because your mind comes with this, you know, tunnel vision right. of, of what it is that you've always been programmed to believe works well. You know, I'm, you know, I, I'm going to get, uh, I'm going to get this, this, this particular threaded sheets uh, or whatever. And, and it's got to be this name brand because that's what mom and them bought. Right. You know what I'm saying? Being the research, other other, exactly. I, other brands out there. Exactly. Right? But you know, I play devil's advocate on this because I go back to, the, like I said, with the funding and things like that to where we feel like, okay, like I said, sometimes shopping black is not always the best quality. Sometimes their customer service is not there. Things like that. So you have all these issues with shopping black sometimes. How do you negate that? Because okay. it's like somebody might raise that question. I feel like this here. So, granted, these issues do exist, right? But again, how can we how how can we combat this by first of all, you can't combat anything without without giving an example that it can be done. Right. So anybody that's listening and that may be right now, we could be speaking directly to you and, and, and this could be your line. And, and this could be your, you know, this could be your call and your path to, you know, to success. If you if you consider yourself a so-called all black, you know, um, clothing business or what have you, then the things, the areas that you definitely have to work on, customer service has to be on point. Right. First of all, can't nobody treat you better than you willing to treat yourself. So if you treat other people the way you would want to be treated, then to be honest with you, you already a step ahead in the game. Right. Not only that, you know. Let's not, and this is something that's key too, and I get it, and and this is where this is where it really gets, it really gets iffy and it really gets dicey because everybody that's successful, everybody that's successful, what's the first thing that they want to do with their clothes, you know, their clothing line, they overcharge, 
want to overcharge. Mm, true that. They put it up, they man, and it's like you. Nah, you, I do agree with that. Like I feel like sometimes it do be, you know what I'm saying. I don't know if that's a like a branding thing to be like, okay, you don't want to set it too low to where it's not taken seriously, but you want to set it high enough to where it's like a demand for it. I don't know, but I do feel like sometimes it be like crazy. Outrageous. I believe we've we've you been. I, I really feel like we've been tricked into believing that if it ain't expensive, then. First of all, the quality must be questionable. Hmm. Or we believe that, you know, if it's if it's not expensive, then to be honest with you, you know. But it, now I will play devil's advocate on this. Mm -hmm. I would say that they the the question of to get better quality, you also have to pay more mm -hmm. because you want it to be more durable Depending on what you want to do Like I okay, say like so More not, potent Or so. more 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 sturdy Whatever the case may be I say fair Oak wood and pine wood Okay type I say fair to you But again I come back again And I say this here In order In order to create anything It calls for a team Right Networking Back in the day What worked the most What worked the most Is the art of trading mm -hmm. And so if somebody already If they owned a lot of land And they had oak wood And all this other stuff Then guess what They can sell you The product you need And then in return You can give them It's like bro nah, This I stuff, agree. This stuff agree, can be man. This stuff is dur it, it's, it's doable It is doable It's all about You know Formulating a good team And again How Boy Everything we going through Within our culture it's it's so many different it's so many different things, man, that you have to you have to break down and it it, it calls for a resetting. A right. re, a mass right. resetting because immediately as I'm saying this, I'm thinking about okay, cool, this could be done. But you know, the next word I'm about to say, this is why we struggle. You gotta find somebody you trust. Yeah, hundred percent. This is man, why we struggle reason. because so, uh, so you mean to tell me? All right. So the Lars and them, they over there, you know, they got they got the cotton. But you mean to tell me? Wait a minute now. You heard it through the grapevine that they selling to somebody else too. And hold on, what they selling to them? Right, right, right. Now all of a sudden we got to get in their pocket. We got to find out what they selling to them. <laughs> that is true though. Bro. But it's like, it's like, I guess this too. We got to be forthcoming, you know. I'm cool with that, man. Like I, I'm, I'm never gonna say like, um, you should shop all black and you should be. If you could do that, then do that, man. But I feel like you know that's a little bit unreasonable. But I do say you should support black, man. Especially if you're a black person, man. Like support some black businesses. It's apps out there that have like. All you could you could search by area. Like if you stay in Savannah, if you stay in Atlanta, it's places to um where you can search like yo black bit black restaurants, black hairstylists, black this, black that. So I do think you should support black man and try to like you know boost the economy because for me the reason I say support black is because I want to see more black representation. See, yeah, you, you know what I'm see, saying. My, I got a daughter growing up and exactly. I want her to be able to say, look, I could look at somebody in an executive position or I could look at a you know a top technology brand or a top you know, whatever brand and say, look, there's somebody like me that's doing that in the world and I could do that too. So I just want black representation, man. That's all I'm saying. You want to, okay, if you're going to say you want to be a spokesman for our people, then it calls for you to have to f uh, familiarize yourself with the people. You can't speak for the people if you don't, if you don't feel or empathize or sympathize with the people. 100%. You got to be able to, and, and that's a tough job, especially if you're from the wealthy Version of our people If that's the only thing You accustomed to With the we wealthy version Of our people And you say You're going to speak For other people Nah bro What Why would you say that mm -mm. Nah because you man got, I don't believe that Because No What I'm saying Is this here You have to familiarize Yourself with that That you may lack And if right. you don't understand Nothing about Those the inner city Or you don't understand Anything about the Oppressed, or you don't understand anything about no, those. No, definitely, that's, definitely. So you all I'm saying is you got to, yeah, with you the got, issues. What I'm saying is you have to become grounded in all aspects. Right, of, right, right. Yeah, you yeah. can't just I say you from you. the from the from the wealthy. <laughs> so so my, yeah, yeah. You come out there, tell me I represent <laughs> us. <laughs> You don't even yeah, sound yeah, like us. You, you, yeah. you do got to familiarize yourself with the issues Damn. and the problems going on. Just Cause because you, you got money, you got influence, don't mean necessarily you can help. You know what I mean? Like, but you know, oftentimes that's what happens, though. That you know, somebody may come from 
the you know the higher up or the the upper tier of us in city uh, they represent us and they get out there in front of the people talking about they speaking on behalf of us right we don't even understand what he's saying right now like yeah, what is I he see. saying you understand what, what look let me get a dictionary i don't you know I feel you on that, it's man. like nah you got to and then first of all you like who is that have you ever seen them before have they even been here in savannah before you like I don't know this brother. No, nah, that's true though, man. I, I th- but at the same time, too, I would say I would bring up the argument that uh, sometimes you don't have to be the face, but you can support. Like for instance, uh, I disagree with this. Why you say that? You okay? You don't have to be the face, but you have to be the what? You can support, but you. I, first of all, I want to know what it is that I'm supporting. No, what I'm saying is like, let's just say I'm a black tech owner and I own, I'm a close to a billionaire, right? Don't, nobody knows my name. Nobody really knows me my Facebook. They just know like whatever pops up on the internet. But I've been funding HBCUs. I've been funding this and that. I've okay, been so how am I supposed to know this though? Uh, because I do it. Like it don't I, have to you, be Okay you telling me you, you do it But again I've never seen you before It's already a disconnect I've never seen you before How I know there's not Somebody out here Perpetrating to be So called black But that's what I'm saying The the, the paper trail Gonna tell Like if I'm This is this is fun Because the schools do it they, they have fundings And they have like A list of all the donators And things like that um, Maybe I misunderstood What you said This always resonates With me man you can always you can have a boss, right? Right. And the boss, you look at them, and a lot of times, a lot of people already have thoughts about a boss because they like, first of all, bro, you, you too good to even you get down here to even do, man. You just tell me what to do, man, with my job. Tell me what my job is, and don't don't sit up there and don't don't hound me about this. Thing. And then you got certain people that that's you know your old you know your boss. They sit up there and they, nah, I'm telling you, you don't do it that way. And you like you know. Man, look, bro. Like in your mind, you like you gonna keep telling me, bro. And let's be real, you ain't never been out here to do this before. Right, you know right. what I'm saying? You man, I'm already pissed off because I'm always get coming home dirty, this, that, and up. And then um, my old man said, man, he had a boss. And he said his boss uh told him that you know to do something he really didn't want to do it, and it was one of the worst possible situations. Like you know, and he was like uh. He said he was he was pissed off. He said in his mind he had already had then um you know come to his uh, he pretty much was already halfway home in his mind. Yeah, yeah. He said he remember he was uh he was asked to do something and he was again he was pissed off in his mind is that another. He said man but he you know he he started the task whatever and he said man next thing he said next thing he knew man his boss had then got out there with him mm-hmm. and was doing it. Oh that's legit and. It's like, man, I. it's crazy because I had that, that situation to come full circle for me when I was like 19, 20, man. And like I looked at, you know, I looked at my boss and I was like, man, you know, old white man. And I'm like, uh, I'm like, bro, like, I mean, this man always, you know, running his mouth, man, Alabama fan, that, that and other. I'm like, man, when he used to always, boys. yeah, he always, he, that's what I was thinking, right? <laughs> he used to always call me, he used to always call me magic. And, uh, and next thing I know, man, he like running his mouth with a old dude, old dude. Shouts out to Rith- uh, Withero, that's his name. Withero. It's a Withero. And one day, man, like he was, man, I was, I was hot. I was hot this one day. And um, this man, I was uh, I was uh, operating a pallet jack or whatever, and he just still chirping, steady chirping. And next thing I know, man, I'm trying to, you know, do what I'm doing. And he he's still talking to me about the way he wanted it done. And the reason I'm like, man, I'm just I'm sick of this. It ain't like he going to get out here. And I'm thinking that, man, this older man had on some penny loafers. Mm-hmm. Next thing I know, he then grabbed the, uh, the pallet jack and he, you know, he trying to get it. And it got stuck, man. From that day, though, he had won me over, man, because. He wasn't afraid to get out there on that front line with me. But do you think it's a um, it's a um, separation between okay, I could do I could get on the boots on the ground, but I could do way more by doing it this way. You know what I'm saying? And I think that's what the angle I was coming at. I was like, yeah, it's cool that you go out there, and I'm not saying I'm discouraging that, but I think sometimes more could be done if you do it. It's not the only way to do it, but more could be done this okay. way. So you're a practical think. I want, and I'm going to present the situation for you, and I want you to decide from this. Right. Okay. So, 
again, I simply say fair, fair assessment. Okay, the things that could be forged through time and a little effort, I'm talking about just being present, a little time and effort. It helps both parties out. Number one, you can be, you can have all the resources in the world, you're never around, but you just send in, you send in resources because you are able to have, you, you have, you have the money, the capital to do that, right? Right. But you never even been out there. Now, you pop up on the scene and here it is. You pop up like undercover boss. People don't even know who you are. Now, you hear what the people saying about you. Right. The you they've never seen before, but now you out there on the front line with them. And now you actually see firsthand the experiences that, the, you know, uh, you, you can see all of the issues, the challenges, everything that they face. And you like, bro, here it is. I've been sent. Now you even able to see the resources you've been sending and how they ain't even helping out. You've been sending the wrong resources. You're like, Yo, you know what? I've truly been disconnected to this whole situation. But I think that's a difference between like situations like versus I think it's different between situation and then what you could provide for that situation. Like, for instance, uh, I'm thinking about building a school like a, 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 a international center for technology at a school. It's like that'll do way more than me doing talks on campus because I'm providing okay. resources for that school to okay. be able to be used by thousands of students. Right. But guess what? OK, let's just say you. You providing this, but let's just say you're a person of color. Mm -hmm. Now, let's just say the school that you, okay, let's just say the school that you're building, right? First and foremost, it's very unlikely that people of color even going to be able to make it there. Well, I could do it at HBCU. I could do it at whenever. But oh. I think what I would say, well, it depends on what the purpose is. Because if, if it's to help uh, people of color, then I need to direct it towards that. If it's uh, to just okay. impact students. So what you're saying, that says a lot, right? But again, that calls for you to be, you have to familiarize yourself with the situation. How can you familiarize your, is yourself with the situation if you're not even around? That's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah, no, no, no. I do think you have to have a connection to it. Like you have to do something, like you have to have some familiarization of it. And then you decide, okay, would I be better off doing A or should I be better off doing or would this be better off by doing B? And then you make your separate, you, you separate it from there. You know what I'm saying? Okay. I get what you're saying. What I'm saying is if I'm ever, if I'm ever put in a position in which I have, I've been blessed with the capital to provide a, a set of resources and this, that, and other, I'm going to tell you something, bro. And this just, this just, this is just me speaking. What's going to make me different is the fact that I'm not just sending resources or, 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 or the capital in a certain. What I want to do, I want to go there personally. I want to see these people. I want these people to understand you're not in this by yourself. Again, you know, with our, you know, with our wives, with our family, what do they ask for? They ask for, OK, although we may be making all the funds in the world, bro. If we're not even there to be present with them, then to be honest, it's already a disconnect. They'll grow to resent you for the time you never even been around. Not the gifts and all this other foolishness you've sent before, because really and truly, at the end of the day, that doesn't mean nothing if you're not around. I don't know if um, it's right for every situation, though. Again, you you absolutely right. It may not be right for every situation, but I tell you no lie. This is just me. It's like a lot of time, bro, you get you get a, a set of instructions that's passed down and you be like, man, where in the world did this come from? It came from the high ups. And these people ain't never once even worked in the warehouse before to even understand how the warehouse works. But they want to, you know, they we're going to start this new uh, system, this, this new process. Even if you may have been in one warehouse where it worked at, every warehouse is like. Again, I keep I always tell you this. It's like children, bro. No two children are alike. I need to understand what, what I'm dealing with. Hmm. Now, once I can speak that language, all right, cool. I get it now. All right, so this is what we're going to do for this area here. I think it takes two types. Like for me, uh, my personality type is, uh, you mentioned it, it's stacks. So like I feel like humans <clears throat> operate off of predictability. Whether like, let's just say you do a budget for the whole year. Throughout that whole year, 
you look at everything and you say, okay, I spent this amount here. I spent the most here. I spent the most here. Same thing with resources. Hey, the computer lab gives, this is the bill for the computer lab. This is the amount of watts was used, blah, blah, blah. You can break it down for each month. Okay. In the, in the summer months, it gets used more than the winter months, things like that. So I, I like to look at stats and I think both of them are necessary. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Because it's true, man. Because I've had experiences to where I'm like, bro, my man ain't never been down here, even in the military or in school. It's yeah. like, come on, man. The professor, come on. When the last time you been to school? And like to be honest with you, like even with the funding, like okay, let's. I'm gonna make this translate over to the okay to the uh, statistical part, right? Right. So you might look at something like you might take a bill and look at it, and you'd be like, okay, why did we have such a? Okay, we got a. We got a clear imbalance over here. It was high one, you know, one month. Why is it so low over here? This you like, okay, that's that's like an anomaly. Why did that happen? Let's just say we go into the school system. You go into the school system. I go in there and I'm like, okay, first and foremost, why the library look like this? Right. First of all, how many people even come to the library? And you know what? We don't even we don't even people we don't even have a lot of kids coming here. I can see why it's tore right. up in here. <laughs> right, you know what yeah. I'm saying? So you like, what's the budget on the library? Why that nobody? You know what I'm saying? First of all, y'all got computers in here look like it was from the 70s. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> I wouldn't want to be in here. I come and I, I I talk to you and you like, yeah, man. Also, like you know, we we had a lot of activity going on over here. Why this particular month, man? That was finals. Mm. That was finals. That's all it is. They people had to go in there during that time. Makes sense, right? Right. That I, I see what you're saying. Yeah, right, like, that is true. You do yeah. have to have uh, some. You do have to have a perspective from the view of it. Yeah, you know you what just, I'm yeah. No stuff I like think that. that. That's dope that you say that and you broke it down like that because I think that's what uh, a lot of people miss out on. It's like the mastermind groups that go on to where people you have more than one person in the room because I think too a lot of times some people could get with the money and the resources like yo I got it so Ooh. I'm gonna do it the way I see it. But yeah. you need that that collaborative uh, approach, you do, to man, it, bro. You have you, certain you people. Feel me? That, you're right, because certain people, man, they get stuck in their ways, and then when you get stuck in your ways, everything everything tends to look the same. Right. And to be honest with you, you you know you you start to miss out on you know well, you, you miss out really on the opportunity. Good. Yeah, we're coming up on time, man. I want to add something, man. Little known heroes. This was uh something that I wanted to add in. We spoke about a little bit of Black history and just like some black, uh some um some community topics, man, affecting the Black community. R- Reginald F. Lewis. Uh, I'm gonna put the link in the bio for the YouTube documentary that's on him. But uh, he grew up in Baltimore. Baltimore. He went to Virginia State on a sports scholarship. Got injured, and he started focusing more on his studies and business. Through that program at his uh at Virginia State, he got an opportunity to go to Harvard. Now, he's the only person in Harvard's history to ever get accepted into their law, law school without applying. Um, he started there, graduated from the Harvard Law School, went to work for Paul Wise and Garrison Law Firm in the 1970s. He left there, started his own form, his own law firm, firm and uh, it was ran by a grant. So once the grant ran out, you know, he collectively put together his funds, started his own, the Reginald F. Lewis uh, law firm in New York. He used his gift to become a corporate lawyer for the United Church of Christ Commission for Racial Justice. And he represented the Wilmington 10. Long story short, the guy uh, bought this international food company. He was able to, in November 29th um, or November the 30th of 1987, he was able to close on this business for nine hundred eighty-five million dollars. The first black uh, African American to buy sixty-four companies at one time in thirty-four countries, mm. and uh, that was like the, it happened in the nineteen eighties, man. He was this big, like just conglomerate, man. And uh, I thought it was huge, bro. Just a uh, little known, little known heroes. His name is Reginald F. Lewis. Uh, unfortunately, he died when he was fifty from a, a brain cancer. But uh, he did dedicate $3 million to the Harvard Law School, and they named the building after him. That's the original F. Lewis International Law Center, and that's the la- largest donation in history from any um, alumni to that school. So uh, it was just dope, man. Uh, lastly, I'm going to mention The Color of Money. Look up that book. She got a lot of talks. The author of that book, uh, I don't want to mispronounce her name, but she got a lot of talks on um, just... Different things, man, I think is interesting. This is Real Talk Podcast. If we said something that you like, that you enjoy, man, give us a like, give us a share, man. Give us a comment. Tell your friends, tell your family members. 
This is the Real Talk Podcast. We post every Thursday, so tune in next week, and we'll see you then. Peace. Real Talk. We appreciate you giving us a listen. If you like this episode and would like to engage with us or support, reach out through our social media platforms, linked in the description, and tune in every Thursday to check out new episodes. See you next week.